Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video talking about survivability in Star Trek Online. And in this video, I'll be talking about engineering ground builds, which is also the conclusion to my rock, paper, scissors um, series of videos on, the, on this channel. Definitely a series which I've been taking a lot of time to do, but I've been trying to do it correctly. Um, in terms of all this stuff in this video, um, I'll be going over the three engineering ground builds combined with the duty officers for all, all the different types of ground builds for science, tactical, as well as engineering for tanking on the ground. Um, alongside that, I will include a couple of videos and probably add some more links um, as, as I have time. Um, included to other um, websites online, which can be useful for you for different ground builds inside of the game. Because there are so few sources, I feel that those links will probably give you a decent feel as to how other people inside the game view ground combat. Obviously, a lot more, more people view ground combat in terms of just doing as, as much DPS as possible. I love tanking, and so I like to go uh, a more survival and tanky type of route instead. Um, but overall, the reason why engineering is really the most complicated inside the game is because science and, and um, tactical have very distinct advantages on ground. Tactical has such a high amount of threat generation potential for them, which is really, really insane. Um, and science, because of its synergy with Medical Tricor and Medical Vanguard, is an extremely strong um, tank as well as damage dealer inside the game very, very easily right off the bat, without having to do really any work at all. Engineering, to be about as effective, um, has to be able to do a lot more stuff and fancy things in order to be as effective as, as the other guys unless you're going specifically for a fabrication build basically the game is veering towards you trying to be a fabrication build but doing protecting and defending for a stationary target there is also some disabling stuff along with that too but there's not a lot of duty officers that really amplify that further sadly but anyway let's go ahead and get into those engineering builds as i said before these are the three that i've come up with that i think are decent inside the game I am including a link for a lot of other discussions on unground stuff inside the game. If you don't like my opinions on this, feel free to um, follow those links um, to see uh, other, other people with their own, own opinions inside of the game. For these three different builds, the fabrication one is for um, operations in which you're defending a target. It's very turret and mine based, and you're just running around the place placing stuff. The disabler method is for a lot of your mobile operations. Where you're not, or when you're not in any particular place for very long at all, you just you're defeating a bunch of enemies and then moving to the next section. There's a lot more of disable and impair based, and more of trying to make your allies more effective in in the process. The pseudo take method is um, best if you're in an engineering group, um, and so as thus, um, this is a kit module AOE damage based um, um, pseudo science tank build. Actually, um, it's really the best engineering tank option in, inside the game. Technically, you could go the weapon route, but as I told you all before, tactical and um, with, with um, threatening stance and draw fire is already going to get a base 3,000 additional threat generation. It's really not practical to go the weapon route to try to tank on the ground. Your best chance really is using kit modules and getting similar to the tanking stuff that science actually has inside the game. But that's just my personal opinion. In terms of operations themselves, obviously colony invasion and area of Sumpec are really, really good for, fab for fabrication guys. Disablers, I really, really like Brotherhood of the Sword, a need of infiltration, and a lot of your competitive missions will really like disablers too. For pseudo tank, the ones that really stuck out to me was Omega ground missions, simply because you typically have a lot of engineers in, in, in Omega ground stuff because en engineering mines are actually very effective against the Borg. And of course, for new car prime as as well, it's also pretty decent there. Usefulness: this is the best overall for en for engineers. Disabler is also decently strong too. Pseudo tank stuff is only if you're trying to be a stubborn tank player um, in, in ground combat. For fabrications, here's definitely a lot of them to think about. Mecha generator is the overall better one for you. In the bug hunt and undine infiltration missions, you're better off going with a nanite medical generator. Um, however, if, if, if you're not a fan of upgrading at all, this one already starts at um, Epic Mark 12. Well, this one, you have to get it off, off of the exchange or off of the fleet um, in order to get it to be comparable in terms of Nanite. So depending upon your, your circumstances, you might still go for a Nanite overall instead of a medical generator. 
Beam turret versus Biotech turret. This one is um, if you need to get enemies like pushed away from a place you're defending. If, if, if it's okay for them to get up and close, the beam turret at ultra rare for the flamethrower is actually a bit more effective in, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's a lot more consistent damage, while well, this one's a lot more spike damage. Force field dome is extremely strong for um, some duty officers that you'll see towards the end of this video that has a 50% chance to uh, push enemies back and, and make them prone, which is pretty nice. But how Mark Minor is, is a nice heal, but there's other stuff inside the game that's better for you. The Crown Time Mine Barrier and other mine barriers inside the game are also pretty standard for engineers, especially in the fabrication build type method. It gives a general connect damage plus a slow. Other mine barriers have something special along with this with a little bit less kinetic damage overall. If you if you don't know where enemies are, are spawning, a better option instead of Crown Time Mine Barrier is a Neutronic Mortar from the Delta reputation. This one's extremely strong and extremely nice. If you're able to quickly target your constructs that you've built, Quick Fix is, is a really great option. If you're very slow at that, Equipment Diagnostics is a little bit better for you. So this is my example build for, for fabrications that I really like playing inside the game. Keep in mind that whenever I do um, Borg missions with um, with a fabrication method, I'll try out the beam turret for, um, for Paradox Bomb, actually. And I'll try it out Neutronic Mortar for um a for, for for the minefield but other than that this this build is basically what i use the whole time and i i have, I have the three piece here because the two piece is pretty nice for the heal plus the three piece actually i, I go for the integral fruits and remodulation um thing here because this this is not built for tanking this is where your damage is going to be coming from and so having the c having the crm device from cold from the cold storage mission definitely allows you to slow enemies down so that it's a, it is much harder for them to get to your constructs. So your constructs last longer and deal more damage. In my opinion, this is pretty straightforward. Um, in the new, new cars um, situations, you need the, you need the envir environmental suit. This one's the best one in the entire game. You get to basically go for more aggressive stuff here. Like, I don't know, if you wanted to do the... Um, there are a couple of different sets which actually give you buffs to your team. The Gamma, Gamma Reputation Ground Armor is the one that sticks out to me right now, but there are a couple of other armors, I think. Um, no, I'm not going to try to get them, off, get them off the top of my head. There are, there are at least three ground um, sets inside the game that give you give your team um, bonus effects. Just the Gamma one's the most recent one. All right, let's go to the Disable ones now. For these different op op options here, the new stuff here is that the medical field passive is actually a lot more effective if you're doing tons of, maneuver, uh, tons of moving around and you're barely in, in one place for any long period of time. As thus, basically having that medical field that's a little bit weaker but around your captain the whole time is also pretty nice, especially if your medical generator is constantly getting destroyed right after you place it. Well, if you have the medical field that only goes away whenever you get knocked out, it's pretty nice. Um, a support drone is actually coming to come to a factor here. I personally prefer the explosive drone. I know a lot of people like the regular support drones, or uh, the, there's a couple of really weird ones inside the game that like you you can use if you're like rooted in place to use it. I'm I'm, I'm not a fan of those. I, I like being able to be mobile at all times. Forceful dome is still pretty strong, but in this situation, delegate devastation is also pretty powerful too, uh, because in for for disablers. Um, your job is to try to impair that enemy as much as possible and buff your own team up as much as possible. So being able to improve you know, your team's overall damage, even though you are giving yourself a self-weapon disable during that time, it's still pretty strong too. Um, weapon malfunction is actually pretty nice too, but the problem is we have sabotage now, which is an, an AOE weapon disable version of weapon malfunction. Sabotage is just too good in the game right now. In most of my engineering builds, I, I still debate whether I should use Sabotage for everything just because it, it is just that strong inside the game right now. Fuse Armor for this particular type of build is also nice too. It's a single target, slow, then root, then stun on, on them, while giving them a lead electrical damage over time during the whole duration. It does have a decent cooldown, but it's a basically guaranteed stun after, after a few seconds, which is pretty nice. So this is the actual Disabler build itself. Uh, the, the kit frame is basically the same, as well as all the stuff right here. 
big things that changed was basically everything else here. Uh, the medical field passive is now what I'm using, along with sabotage and delegate devastation, to allow the allow allow the enemies to. Well, I didn't change this, but whatever. Um, um sabotage is that AOE w w weapon disable. Delegate devastation buffs my my allies while I my my while my own weapon can't fire. Fuse armor gives that slow root stun, and the explosive drone gives the AOE explosion within three meters of the target whenever um, they get close to it. The Nukara Strike Force Viral Suit is still the best one, so that's one I would still recommend going towards. For the pseudo tank build, this is where things get really, really interesting. Uh, the options that you should use for healing is either the medical field or the shield recharge. I really recommend shield recharge um, with three duty officers that buff this up significantly so that you have a really high chance to have basically in invulnerable shields. For, for science, it's like guaranteed 50% shield resistance. When you activate that shield recharge, it's like a 60% chance to have a 99% shield resistance on your shield, which is pretty nice. Um, uh, I highly recommend this if you're going for a tank build for an, an engineering. Combine that with three different um, abilities that give you damage and, and holds of some type. I recommend Subspace Rift um, as as almost the go-to one for this. You get it from the mission What's Left Behind. It's one of the last missions in, in the Delta Quadrant. And it also comes back to the Alachi storyline, which I really, really wish they actually addressed inside the game still. Because they're obviously still around and they're perversions of our current races inside the game. So I would really want to see how after the war the people treat the Alachi. It would be very interesting. Paradox Bomb is, is still a temporary operative kit module, so anyone can actually use it along with Uncertainty, Uncertainty Burst, which is very similar to the um, the Chaos Blaze from the Doom to Repeat mission. The difference between these guys is that this one's just a Confuse. This is a weaker Confuse along with AoE fire damage. Alongside that, we have Molten Terrain from the Summer Event and Electrostatic Field, um, with which are both pretty strong AoE damage abilities too. Then alongside that, you you either want to choose between sabotage and psionic empathy feedback. You won't want both because this one, like like it's an AOE weapon disable, while this one you're wanting to deal damage because during this during this duration, you reflect back a high percentage of that of that energy and psionic damage back to the enemies that are that are attacking you. Um, because this is an engineering specific um, thing, I really wish this was just a universal console because this would really make um, tanking for the other two professions even easier and be able to do a lot more damage inside the game. But anyways, for the pseudo tank build, what I have here, I use the fleet versatile engineering kit frame with a faster um, regenerated thing there just for an extra heal. Additionally, I have the shield, I have the shield recharge for additional shield heal and shield resistance, which also gives me a super insane amount of shield resistance about half, half the time whenever I'm using this thing. It is decently spammable. Um, then I will do the combo of Subspace Rift and Molten Terrain with Electrostack Field. I feel that, that these are, are, are pretty good. Engaging with these two and then when I'm when I'm really close to them, I activate Electrostack Field as well. Because I'm because this build is based around being really close to them at all times, the Zephyr and Cochrane Shotgun is very, very nice. And then of course I'm, I'm using the Adaptive Mako um, 3-piece um, just because the 2-piece is pretty strong for the um, heal. As well as as a three piece here because I'm actually really tanking inside the game now. Um, I'm, I'm I'm dealing more damage as as I take damage. With synergizes with this and it is just pretty nice in general. Combined with that, the psionic and empathy feedback that the damage they're dealing to me, a lot of that is being reflected back onto them. So they did a really big crit on me. A big portion of that crit is also going to be hurting them at at the same time. So it is pretty nice to get that revenge on them. Um, of course, like normal, um, the Nukara Strike Force um, suit is obviously the best one there. For ground traits, um, a lot of this is pretty similar to what other ones that you've seen. The biggest one here for changes is Orbital Devastation. Orbital Devastation makes Orbital Strike actually useful inside of ground combat before its Orbital Strike is basically worthless. Um, the other thing is that you have to choose Nanomolecular Architect if you're going to be a Fabrication Engineer. Or if you're not going to choose like doing lots of fabrications, I'd recommend going with, with shield harmonic resonance. It basically gives you an extra 15% shield resistance versus 
any one energy type that is, is, is attacking you. It is pretty nice. Alongside that, a lot of my standard ones that I like, field technician, creative, acute senses, and then with iron sides, regenerative tissue, and serenity. I feel that these are all very, very strong in terms of ground traits. And of course, like normal, Merc Worker Command is a pretty standard one outside of science with energized nanites, miniaturized chronal capacitor, reactive protein iron infusion, and strength and personal shielding. Now there's two different um, grounds skill ways to go. This is the, this is the fab fabrication method that I, I recommend. Obviously you don't want outcome at only regen. You want everything to go towards making your fabrications, fabrications more useful and more effective. However, this right here will amplify your mine damage, which is very nice, which is the only reason why I have this here at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't invest in this at all. Alongside that, getting a little bit of, of health, and basically the rest of this is kind of just up to you and how, how you want to divvy this up. Um, it's really just up to you, really. Uh, because you, sh you shouldn't be getting a lot of threat generation, a lot of this shouldn't really matter too much to you, but it's really just up to you in terms, in terms of what your preferences are. And then this is the build that I recommend for disablers and tank builds inside the game. It's basically basically all of your non-traditional en engineering. Obviously, your outcome at only regen should not be invested in. Since you don't have any mines for these types of builds, um, there's no, no need to invest in this at all. And so investing in kit modules is the most effective way to go there. And then adding additional health and shield capacity and, and resist um, is, is pretty nice as well. Especially whenever your duty officer stuff is not procking, just having additional um, shield resist in general is pretty nice. In terms of this, these two are actually pretty equal, actually. I, I could see any combination of two here, two here, one and one. All this would work very, very, very well. Just my personal preference of how the kit things work. This is the build that I that I personally prefer going. But any of this any of this can really work. And if you have a very different type of like kit modules that you're using, you can have a very different amount of, of skill setups for, for an engineer on the ground. Now for duty officers, because I neglected to talk about this last week. So for duty officers for science, the biggest the big ones that I, that I recommend getting, number one is the exothermic conduction field variant for the explosive expert. This this gets a lot of multi purchase projectiles um, to be basically be hitting enemies in your exothermic induction field, which is which is your main form of damage anyway for science captains. Being able to amplify that further is pretty nice. And then getting cooldowns for the exothermic induction field and other science powers is pretty nice too. Outside of that, there's nothing really great for science. And so because I spam an echo tricorder for science tanking, getting additional temporary hit points uh, whenever this is being used is also pretty nice. For tactical, this is extremely straightforward actually. Because you're built around draw fire, having the draw fire variants of shield distribution officer and energy weapon officer var variants for these is also pretty nice. This is the must have right here. These are all nice. You could, you could always like exchange the, these guys out for additional like crit chance, crit severity, other types of damage or healing, basically whatever, whatever you want. You need weapons malfunction though. You really, really need this guy if you're going to be a tactical tank on the ground. Because this basically stops weapons, range weapon damage from hurting you. Because it's a very, very high percentage chance whenever you add two to three of them to your build. It's very, very, very high. And now we get the duty officers for engineering, which is pretty complicated. But for the fabrication one, it's actually pretty straightforward. The force field variant for the shield distribution officer gives you a high percentage to knock down enemies within 10 feet every, every second that they're close to um, your um, your force field. Um, getting an additional turret and quantum motor with whenever you're beat, whenever you're already trying to beat those in is also pretty nice. And um, and also for generators to get an additional um, shield generator whenever you do using a medical generator. Like this is all super synergistic with um, with, with defending a particular target. Um, for for disablers as well as pseudo tanks, getting the four master with, with, the, with the cover shield variant to give you additional AOE damage resistance rating is pretty nice to you and to your allies. Um, getting the support zone variant for more support drones is pretty nice. Um, the, the vascular generator variant for the biologist um, for the pseudo tank because you have the vascular generator off of your kit your kit your kit frame. Um, this is actually it's actually a pretty nice uh, percentage of, of likelihood. So being able to get an additional key off for 10 seconds after you use that. 
because it has a decent cooldown, it's, it's actually pretty nice to get a second heal in between. And also for, for tanking, the big thing here is the shield recharge variants. Have, having all three here is, is extremely valuable. Outside of that, it's really up to you as to what um, duty officers that you really want. Um, because most of them really aren't that great for engineering. There's a lot of better options for tactical. Tactical obviously has the best ones for some reason for all the stuff in there because tactical is an extremely straightforward profession. I'm, I'm going to do a whole bunch of damage really quickly. And that's basically all the tactical does. Um, w once again, thank you all for watching um, this Rock, Paper, Scissors um, trilogy of, of videos that I've been making. Uh, with tactical being rock, science being scissors, and engineering being being paper, um, it's it, it's it's been fun ma making all this. Of course, I'll still be me making um, all a whole bunch of other survivability videos. Uh, I will still be continuing doing um, the other energy space builds inside the game. Um, I, I still have four more to go for the high end, as well as um, six bu budget built ones inside the game. Um, and also, probably by the time that, that Age of, of Discovery comes out, or a little bit thereafter, I will also make the ultimate rainbow build, um, including Proton, to have eight different energy weapons um, on ownership and how to actually make make that work properly. Well, to make it work work okay. So you, you have all that look to, to look forward to. Um, I'm, I'm also going to be starting another channel to support one, one of the fleets in the Armada. As, as I'm one of the new fleet admirals for for that fleet, um, that and, and on that video I'll I'll be covering some like tutorials and things to go through the various missions on on Elite um, inside of the game. So you have all that to look forward to. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you all for liking and, and subscribing to this channel. Uh, the channel has been growing a, a much more quickly than I've actually been expecting. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. So yeah, feel free to like and subscribe, share with, with your friends if you think that you that your friends are tanks or whatever, and or they think that they'll find the stuff in, in these videos beneficial to them. Once again, thank you so much um, for, um, for watching the videos on, on this channel. And I'll continue to provide you content as long as I feel that I'll be able to give you valuable, um, unique, new, new content for you. Thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.